Learning a new tool can sometimes be extremely overwhelming, which makes it hard to get started. That's why in this video, I'm going to break down the absolute essentials on how to use Adobe Edition and get you up and running in just eight minutes. Let's do this. So the first thing I do before even opening Audition is connect my mic to my computer. For a USB mic, all you need to do is plug it in directly. For a microphone with an XLR connection, you need to connect it to an audio interface or mixer and then to your computer via USB. And for some audio interfaces like the Zoom H6, you need to arm the right channels as well. Audition Preferences. From there, open the program and go to the top bar where it says Audition. Hit Preferences and then go into Audio Hardware. Change your default input to the name of the USB mic or audio interface, and then hit OK. To create a new solo track, click Command Shift N or go to File and New Audio File. So change the settings to 24 bit, mono, and for the sample rate, choose 44.1 kHz if it's audio only and 48 kHz if it's for video. Recording in Audition. The next step is to start recording. You can hit the record button or shift and space together as the shortcut. Then start reading your script in the same way you would while recording. While doing this, you should be watching the levels meter and adjusting your gain knob on your microphone or interface to a point where your peaks are in between negative 12 and negative 18 decibels. This is so you don't end up clipping, which means going over zero decibels, which sounds really bad and distorted. I highly recommend listening back and making sure the audio sounds good afterwards. If for some reason it doesn't, go through this checklist. Check your recording space. If it has a lot of reflective surfaces, reverb will be an issue. So put some clothes or blankets around you. Go back to audio hardware and make sure you're recording with the right microphone, just in case you're using your computer's internal microphone by accident. And if everything seems like it should be good, but it's not for some reason, try replacing the wire. That usually fixes it for USB mics. After everything sounds good for your check, record and give your best performance. After you finish recording, it's time to optimize it by applying these effects or edits in order. Noise reduction, compression, normalization, EQ, limiters, and loudness optimization. Firstly, if you're still in the default layout for Audition, you can change things around by dragging around panels. After that, you can click on the three panels and click Save as New Workspace. Feel free to copy my layout if you want. From there, let's go ahead and apply the effects quickly. Assuming you were able to record with your peaks around negative 12 to negative 18 decibels, a fair amount of these values might work for you. But as you gain more experience, be sure to adjust them according to what you hear. Okay, noise reduction. Highlight a part of your audio clip where you didn't talk. Go to Effects, Noise Reduction, and grab a noise sample. Then unhighlight and click Noise Reduction Process. From there, these are the settings that you can go ahead and just copy, and then hit Apply. That should help clean up any unwanted ambient background noises. Next is compression. I use the dynamics effect under amplitude and compression. Be sure to uncheck the other two and check compression. For this one, look at your audio waveform to see where the average peak is and set that as the threshold and then three as the ratio. You can leave the rest unchanged and let's apply. What compression does is make the louder parts of the audio closer to the softer parts so listeners can hear everything clearer after everything is brought up with normalization, which is the next step. You can do this by going into amplitude and compression and then go to normalize and set that to negative three decibels. All this does is bring the highest peak to the level we set. After that is when I would EQ with the parametric equalizer effect. EQing is basically a way to fine tune your audio, but it's generally a more advanced tool that you don't need to do when starting out. So for now, just skip this step, but just know that this is when I would apply it. Finally, open up a window called Match Loudness and drop your audio file in there. Make sure you can see something called ITU Loudness and check to see that it's at negative 19 LUFs, which is the loudness standard for monophiles. Negative 16 LUFs is the standard for stereophiles. If it isn't, the next step would be to hard limit. My audio file is two away from negative 19 LUFs, so I'll hard limit to negative five decibels and then normalize again to negative three decibels. You can also just use the match loudness function, set it to the ITU function and make the max peak negative three decibels. You'll basically end up with the same result. And that's it for effects. Using the waveform editor. After you've optimized your audio, if it's a voiceover where you don't need to sync up with you talking to the camera, you can use the waveform editor to remove mistakes, any ums or long pauses. You can zoom in by using your scroll wheel or highlighting a section and clicking Shift S. From there, you can hit the spacebar or L to listen back to your audio. If you hit L twice, you can listen at two times speed, but it will sound a little weird. 
To delete a section, just highlight it and hit backspace. If you don't actually want to delete the space in between the audio, what you can do is silence it by using the silence effect. After highlighting the section, right click and then you'll see the effect. I set this keyboard shortcut to be S. You can change your keyboard shortcuts under the edit in keyboard shortcuts and then type the name of the effect that you want and click under the area where it says shortcut and then press the key combination that you want. After that, just hit OK and your keyboard shortcut should be set. And that's pretty much it for the basics of the waveform editor. Using the multi-track editor. Let's say that you're editing audio for a podcast and you have two or more files to edit and combine. Firstly, you'd want to do all the effects for each file and then from there, go to the project window and highlight the files you want to combine. Then click Edit in Multitrack. Make sure that the multitrack has the same settings as your audio file, so 24-bit and mono and then name it. After that, you'll see both audio files there and ready to go. Generally, if you've already done all the edits to the individual files, all you need to do is sync up the audio by zooming in to the beginning of both files and then making sure you'd line them up by dragging them. Usually I do this when I'm recording remote with my friends and we clap twice in order to sync up. So I just need to find two really high peaks in the beginning. If you record it in the same place into the same interface, you won't need to do this because it's already synced up. If you want to do further edits in the multi-track, you can cut by using the razor tool by clicking R and then clicking on the section that you want to cut. From there, you can resize the clips, delete them, or increase and decrease the gain by creating keyframes. In order to do that, all you need to do is click on the line and drag it up and down. You can also make multiple keyframes if you want the volume to gradually increase or decrease. And that's the general rundown on how to edit the clips. You can also edit the tracks on the left side. The M button is to mute that track. The S button is to solo that track, so it'll be the only one you hear. The R button is to arm the track for recording. And the default input is basically the same as the beginning where you set the microphone. So if you have an audio interface, you just need to make sure that each microphone is set to a different track, arm each of them, and then you guys can record. After you're done editing, you can combine the files by going to the top bar where it says multi-track and create mix down. Click OK and you'll see a new file pop up on the left side that adds mix down to the name. From there, I like to clean up the mix down a little bit by just hard limiting and normalizing and checking the loudness one more time. If you're planning to upload this to a podcast, you might want to change the file format to MP3 instead. You can easily do that by pressing Save As, which is Command Shift S, and then just click on the drop down menu and click MP3. Doing this will save your original WAV file as well, so don't worry about that. And that was pretty much all the basics on how to use Adobe Audition. Of course, that was a very fast tutorial and there's a lot of details that I missed. It's just a way for you to get started quickly. If you do want to dive deeper, I created a course on Skillshare, which goes over the basics in greater detail. Some of the topics covered will help you better understand effects like EQ, compression, and how to do a more fine-tuned noise reduction. I'll leave a link to the course in the description that will give you guys one month of premium free, so you'll be able to check out the course at no cost. Anyways, I hope you guys found the video helpful. If you did, consider liking and subscribing. It really does help out, so thank you. I hope to see some of you guys at the Skillshare course. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.